Several weeks back, I reviewed a ball watch and it had tritium tubes. So ever since then, people have been asking me about watches and tritium tubes, T25. So today, I've got a watch on the channel that not only features tritium tubes, but also superluminova. In fact, this is a watch that features the best of both worlds. It has tritium tubes on all the indices and the hands, and it has superluminova on the ceramic bezel, as well as a full loom dial. So guys, today we're gonna to have a look at this brand new Pacific Blue Tritium T25 dive watch from Audaz. Let's run the intro and let's get stuck into the review. Okay, welcome back guys. So as you can see here, I've got a Pacific Blue Tritium T25 dive watch. It's a, it's a brand new watch from Audaz. Uh, they reached out to me to have a look at some of their watches and uh, none really caught my attention except for this. And, and, and it caught my attention for a reason. The fact that this thing offers tritium tubes as well as superluminova. But not only that, it also offers a, to me, it looks like a, a Doxa Sub 300T or possibly a 1500T. The way that case shape is, the way it, it tapers down and it's a really 70s retro look and I liked it. And I thought, guys, I've got to get, got to get one of these on the channel. I've got to show you guys. I want to have a look at it for myself. So first and foremost, uh, this watch was sent out to us. I don't have to send it back. So if you saw the paid promotion there, basically guys, there's several different colorways of this watch. They come in uh, black, I believe, a couple of blues, a green, and also this white cream variant. So an interesting uh, combination. I actually chose the white because this is the only one that comes with Superluminova uh, on the dial, as well as the tritium tubes. The other ones have Superluminova in the actual uh, ceramic bezel, but not on the dial. So I wanted to see how this thing responds and what it looks like uh, throughout the day. and. Quite interesting findings, guys. But before we get onto that, let's have a look at the watch specs. So basically what we've got here is a 42 millimeter case diameter, a lug to lug distance of 46 mil, a case height, wait for it, 16 millimeters. But it does not wear like a 16 mil because if you look at the case back and so forth, it seems to tuck in under the wrist. That thing, that whole section under there seems to tuck in beautifully and it wears really well and it also has a 22 mm lug width. So let's put this on the wrist. Let's see what it looks like on my seven inch wrist. Okay, there you go. So that's how this sits on my seven inch wrist. And as you can see, it's basically a 42 mm watch. 46 mm lug to lug, not an issue. Sits quite nice. It is a little bit proud, but not as 16 mm will suggest. Honestly, guys, I'm wearing this. It's a big heavy watch but it doesn't feel like it's a 16 mil watch. In fact, I've got a, uh, a Seiko Bullhead and it sits up a lot higher than this, and that's a 16 mil watch as well. So, but um, the watch is lovely. It's quite a nice, interesting offering. And, and like I said, something a little bit uh, different that I wanted to get on the channel again. I like when manufacturers don't just do a, your standard Rolex, Submariner, Homage and all the rest. So this is a little bit more 70s, a little bit more, you know, quite uh, quite interesting and nice case finishing, especially with the uh, high polish on the sides and the, and the brushing. But look, let's take this off. Let's have a look at this watch. Uh, the bracelet, if you have a look at the bracelet on this, it's a H-Link bracelet and extremely, extremely comfortable. But in saying that, it's also a fingerprint magnet. So as you can see, it's highly polished in the middle. The center links are highly polished. The brush, the H's themselves, they're, they're uh, basically brushed, but um, they're solid. It features solid uh, end links as well. And uh, it doesn't seem to have any sort of taper tool. So it's 22 mil all the way, but the comfort of this is superb. It's absolutely lovely. The letdown of the watch is this, it's the clasp. It's just your standard press clasp, double locking system, nothing special. You've got your micro four, micro adjusts and so forth. Um, it seems to sort of, for me, honestly, this is the only thing that lets the watch down as far as um, uh, quality feel. It seems to be a little bit cheap. It feels a little bit cheap and thin. It's just a standard press clasp. So there is no diver's extension, as you can see. It's your standard, uh, standard clasp. The case back on this is exceptional. I'll get it the right direction. There you go. The case back is a piece of art. In fact, 
I love the case back. I love the look of this. I love the attention to detail. It's like a sculpted piece. It's like a, a, a you know, in the olden days how they used to sculpt uh, marble and so forth uh, and get a piece of artwork. It looks brilliant. It absolutely looks brilliant, guys. I'm so impressed at this case back. Now, looking at the watch itself, it has a ceramic bezel and it's a 120 click unidirectional bezel and we'll, we'll have a play with it in a second. Let's have a listen. So it seems to be very positive. It has a little bit of back play, but the back play seems to just, it's like a spring. It seems to like settle back into position. So if you can see, I'll go forward and it settles back. Forward, settles back and locks into place. So as far as accuracy is concerned, there it is, spot on. So it lines up, yep, absolutely perfect. So like I said, it's got a little bit of back play, but it's a, it's a back play that locks into position. So an interesting bezel. Let's go forward again. Um, if I have to be critical about the bezel, it has a smooth edge finish, a polished finish, and it's a little bit tricky to grab. Uh, it would have been nice if the knurling on that was a little bit uh, either brushed or harsher. Uh, I can imagine on gloves it might uh, present to be a little bit slippery. So that's one thing to note. The crown itself is an oversized crown. As you can see, it's unprotected. It seems to follow the same knurling as that bezel. Uh, it is a black plated stainless steel. So it's not rubber, it's, it's stainless steel and it's plated like a PVD coating. Uh, the action of it, let's unscrew it. Boom, it's popped out. So we can double click, hack the movement, set the time to where we want to. Let's say there, lock it in, start the movement. So single click and we can adjust the date. There you go, 31st, 1st, 2nd, all the rest. Lock it in and movement starts again. So let's do the uh, latch on experience, see what it's like. So we press it in, first time, not a problem. So the watch features the Seiko NH35. So it's a, it's a relatively uh, thick watch, but like I said, appropriately, it's got a Seiko NH35 in it. So robust, not an issue, won't have problems with it as far as diving is concerned, as far as reliability is concerned. Now the crystal on this is a, is a flat sapphire crystal. It seems to be doing a good job. It's got AR coating and uh, I've not had any legibility uh, uh, issues with it. Uh, the only sort of issues I have had is with those hands. If you look at the hands, they're brushed and then right at the edges of the hands where the tritium tubes are, there's a white coating of paint on each hand. So white or cream, it seems to match the dial and in certain lighting situations, I sometimes lose those hands. So the fact that they're thicker though, that the actual tritium tubes are on it, gives you a little bit of a cast a shadow on the side. So you can pick them up, but it would have been nice if they were full brushed with the tritium, uh, tritium tubes uh, inlaid on them. So, but that's just an observation. The markers themselves have tritium tubes in them and the dial itself is a, is a uh, fully loom dial. So there's loom, super luminova on the actual uh, insert on the uh, ceramic insert. It's a loom dial and it's also loom as in tritium uh, T25 on all the markers and the hand. So I'm gonna give you two different types of loom shots, guys. The first loom shot that you're seeing is basically a loom shot of the tritium alone. So let's have a look at that. So as you can see, the tritium hands, the tritium uh, markers and so forth, they're doing a great job. So this is what you'd see at about two or three or four in the morning. So you've got the watch on your side table and the watch has not been exposed to any sort of light. Everything's, uh, you know, the super luminova is obviously, you know, dimmed down. All you're seeing is the tritium. Very clean, very legible. But as soon as you get the super luminova, the actual uh, uh, loom dial and the actual ceramic exposed to light, then all of a sudden you get this. So as you can see, the, th the things come alive. So it's a completely different experience. In, in fact, the loom, the super luminova is overtaking the tritium. So the tritium seems to have just really mellowed down. Obviously it's not as strong. Tritium is a substance that's obviously gonna glow and glow for the next 25 years, regardless of any light source. Whereas the loom, as soon as you add any UV light to it, bang, it lights up. So interesting, very interesting. I, I, I really wanted to see it in the flesh for myself to see what you get out of this. So uh, I think, I think it actually works. I think it actually works when the when the super luminova uh, is basically there to back up the tritium. So the tritium, like I said, it's going to be there glowing for the next 25 years, not an issue. But as soon as the uh, the uh, dial and the actual markers on the on the ceramic bezel light up, then this watch comes alive. It's a completely different experience. So, but look, let's get back to the watch itself. 
The weight of the watch comes in at 187 grams. Uh, this is sized to my seven inch wrist, so with uh, all the links removed and so forth. Um, it's quite a hefty experience, guys. I've had this on the wrist. It's not dissimilar to my bullhead, my Seiko bullhead. Whenever I wear that with a bracelet, same experience. So something like this, you'd probably want to put it on a rubber strap just to take some of the edge off that. So look guys, in summing up, all watches do have pluses and negatives and, and this thing here is no different. So I'm gonna give you its pluses and I'm gonna give you its negatives. The pluses, for me, I like it. It's not your standard Rolex Submariner homage, which is quite nice, it's different. I know it, it's very similar to a Doxa. The case shape itself reminds me of a Doxa. It's so close, it's just a thinner version, a slightly thinner version, but again, very 70s reminiscent with that case, the way it tapers down. I don't mind it, I like it. It's, it's a chunky watch, it's a statement watch, and Seiko used to make a lot of these back in the day. You know, very big, very thick, nice. The fact that it offers tritium as well as superluminova, wonderful. These guys are doing something a little bit different, experimental at this stage possibly, but you know what, it actually works. Uh, the tritium's there for the evenings, the superluminova the, you know, all day, whether you're walking around as soon as you come from an outdoors environment into an indoors, it lights up, it lights up, so you know where you are. Um, the bracelet, the bracelet is super comfortable, I can't fault it. The case back is exceptional. The case back is one of the better case backs I've seen for a long time. It's it's absolutely stunning. It really is, guys. I, I actually spend a bit of time just uh, admiring and looking at this case back. It is wonderful, the detail. Um, like I said, it's like a piece of artwork, which is which is superb to have in a watch. It reminds me of uh, some of the uh, case backs that you get from Omegas, you know, some limited editions and so forth. They do some, some graphics on there, it's quite nice. So. But um, there are negatives, like I said, and the negatives are this. First and foremost, it's weight. Like I said, it comes in, it's a very hefty sort of a, a watch, so you know, you, you'd probably have to take the bracelet off if you want to enjoy it long term. Uh, the bezel, the bezel edge itself to me is a little bit too smooth. It's very hard to grip, um, it's slippery. That's something that I think that they could have rectified by making it just a, uh, either matte or uh, just a little bit harsher, because it is, it is a little bit on the slippery side trying to grip that. The Tritium and Superluminova, it's good. Uh, like I said, it's probably experimental at the time. The Superluminova does take over, but the Tritium comes into its own after several hours. So it's a, neither here nor there with me. The bracelet clasp is cheap. You know, there's no other way of putting it. It really lets this watch down as far as, you know, quality and so forth, because I'm feeling a really good, really well-finished watch, guys. It's uh, the quality finish, the the combination of radial brushing and high polish is fantastic. Uh, the bracelet is fantastic, but the clasp is, look, it's terrible. It really is, guys. It's just a cheap, cheap standard clasp. So that's something to note. There's no diver's extension, like I said, as well. And lastly, the last negative is probably that being the white dial or the cream dial, the white hands and that white dial seem to sort of blend in a little bit. Um, so you could have legibility issues. But like I said, uh, the fact that it's got tritium tubes on the end, you do get a slight casting of a shadow. So you can pick it up, but that's something that could have been avoided with maybe just fully brushed hands with tritium tubes on them. So, but look, I hope you enjoyed that guys. My first Tritium slash Super Luminova watch. Something different, something unique. Uh, it's from Audaz. Uh, guys, they've given me a 30% uh, discount code if you want to grab these. So get on their website, have a look. Um, an interesting offering. Uh, if you guys are looking for something a little bit more vintage, a little bit more funky, and a little bit more technologically advanced with Tritium and Super Luminova, here it is. So I hope you enjoyed that, guys. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you all in the next video.